The preacher man says it's the end of time And the Mississippi River, she's a gold grind The interest is up and the stock market's down And you're only getting mugged if you go downtown I live back in the woods, you see My woman and the kids and the dogs and me I got a shotgun, a rifle and a four-wheel drive And a country boy can survive Country folks can survive I can plow a field all day long I can catch catfish from dusk till dawn Make our own whiskey and our own smoke too Ain't too many things these old boys can't do Welcome to the show, folks. This is James Kelso and the American Freedom Party Report. And yes, there aren't too many things these old boys can't do. That was Hank Williams Jr. singing uh, part of our theme music here on the American Freedom Party Report. And, you know, interestingly enough, Hank Williams Jr. is uh, subscribes to uh, something that we're doing with the American Freedom Party, which is taking our message uh, to the political arena. Hank Williams Jr. has announced he uh, wants to run for Senate uh, in uh, Kentucky, excuse me, in Tennessee. I'm thinking of Rand Paul in Kentucky. He's in Paris, Tennessee, and wants to run for a U.S. senator on a patriot platform. So, uh, stranger things have happened. Maybe Hank Williams Jr. and that country boy song there uh, can bring his, bring his material to uh, the American Freedom Party. Well, our guest tonight is uh, Professor Kevin McDonald, a professor of uh, psychology at California State University, Long Beach, and to folks in the Patriot cause, a very well-known figure. And uh, Kevin, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. It's great to be here, Jim. And may I say that uh, it'd be fantastic if Hank Williams Jr. would uh, would actually run for Senate from Tennessee, and we would certainly... uh, It'd be great for the American Freedom Party. Is he going to? What what party is he going to run on? Is he got a party? Well, I don't think he is certain. And of course, you know, I think he his original thought would be he would contest the Republican primary. Mm. But as you know, we're witnessing with the recent meltdown of the Republican Party vis-a-vis immigration, folks like Hank Williams Jr. are probably having a big problem with the Republican Party establishment led by folks like Majority. House leader Eric Cantor. Uh, so I think this is a very open question. It's very topsy turvy right now, and this is something that the American Freedom Party, you know, we're one of our goals. Uh, folks, I have not yet mentioned Dr. McDonald is on the board of directors of the American Freedom Party, and we are very fortunate to have him there. Uh, I think of Dr. McDonald as really not one of, maybe the leading light in d- directing our intellectual efforts, uh, giving them a, um, getting our intellectual efforts right, uh, with the right approach to our people. The, uh, yes, it would be wonderful if uh, Hank Williams Jr., of course, and Hank Williams Jr. is a, a giant in the realm of populism. The, his audience is huge. Uh, who doesn't like Hank Williams Jr.? Who didn't like his dad, Hank Williams Sr.? And to have a populist figure like that go with the patriotic ideas that we espouse in the American Freedom Party, this would be an extraordinary thing. It certainly would. It would. It, uh, someone like that does have a sort of built-in uh, voter base, you know, some people who are naturally going to be attracted to them. And I think it is an ideal time. I think that you say the Republican Party is just absolutely betraying its, its white base. I mean, it's just unbelievable what's going on hold, now. Especially hold, that, hold, that, hold that thought right there, Dr. McDonald. We'll be right back. Corporate media dominates the American opinion. 
Finding independent voices that counter this avalanche is becoming increasingly difficult. With the endless corruption running rampant throughout our government, independent voices are needed more than ever to battle the offensive against our freedoms and liberties. As a listener of RBN, no one understands this concept better than you. Now it's up to you to do your part. The time has come for you to take action and begin broadcasting the truth to hundreds or thousands of people every month. Sound impossible? Quite the contrary. With pointed slogans from LibertyStickers.com, you can reach countless sleeping Americans unaware that they live in a real-life wonderland. LibertyStickers.com has a huge inventory of political bumper stickers and messages that reflect the truth about our government, our politicians, and the future of America. With so many in stock, there's one perfect for you. Visit us today at LibertyStickers.com. Again, that's LibertyStickers.com. Do your part. Your voice is important. Let it be heard. Don't answer it! How can I stop these annoying collection calls? Imagine being free from your debt without settling and with no payment plan, no negotiating or filing bankruptcy, and no attorneys. What if you could eliminate the risk from all your unsecured debt in about 90 days and keep all your money? You can. It's called Zero Debt Guarantee, and it works. There's no other program of its kind on the planet, and we guarantee the results in writing. Call now, 800-477-9256. Let our team of experts provide you with resources to fight back, stop collection calls, and prevent and stop wage garnishments and bank levies. If you're facing foreclosure, we can help. Don't go it alone. Get free information now by calling 800-477-9256. Talk to an expert who has also completed our program. Call 800-477-9256 for free info or go to ZeroDebtGuarantee.com. That's 800-477-9256 or go to ZeroDebtGuarantee.com. Corporate media dominates the American opinion. Finding independent voices that counter this avalanche is becoming increasingly difficult. With the endless corruption running rampant throughout our government, independent voices are needed more than ever to battle the offensive against our freedoms and liberties. As a listener of RBN, no one understands this concept better than you. Now it's up to you to do your part. The time has come for you to take action and begin broadcasting the truth to hundreds or thousands of people every month. Sound impossible? Quite the contrary. With pointed slogans from LibertyStickers.com, you can reach countless sleeping Americans unaware that they live in a real-life wonderland. LibertyStickers.com has a huge inventory of political bumper stickers and messages that reflect the truth about our government, our politicians, and the future of America. With so many in stock, there's one perfect for you. Visit us today at LibertyStickers.com. Again, that's LibertyStickers.com. Do your part. Your voice is important. Let it be heard. Welcome back to the show, folks. This is the American Freedom Party Report. This is your host, James Kelso. Thank you for joining us. Our guest is Dr. Kevin McDonald, and he is, uh, I'd like to uh, give you some ways that you can read further into Dr. McDonald's work. And keep in mind two websites. One is theoccidentalobserver.net. Theoccidentalobserver.net. Dr. McDonald is the editor of that publication. And another is The Occidental Quarterly. And you can find The Occidental Quarterly at toqonline.com. Uh, this is probably the best reading, both these websites, the best reading and the, the uh, finest intellectual uh, analysis of our situation that you can find anywhere. Uh, Dr. McDonald, how do you, and you, you know, you are an incredibly, I've always marveled at your uh, productivity. Folks, when you're with Kevin McDonald, uh, if you get onto some extraneous subject that doesn't have much of a productive point to it, Kevin's going to cut it short. <laughs> Kevin, is that part of your, is that part of your secret? Well, you got to be uh, to be productive. You have to sort of, you know, really watch your time and, and try to get whatever work you can get done. But um, yeah, I mean, you got. I mean, I want, what we're trying to do. What I'm trying to do really is to change the, the sort of. Well, I'm trying to do a couple things. Axelobserver.net is we have shorter articles. Uh, try to be topical, um, but you know, ultimately we're trying to sort of change opinion of. 
of people with who, who are educated. There are a lot of different audiences out there and a lot of different people like different things. Some people must prefer listening to the radio. That's great. Uh, but I'm, I'm just saying that, that, that we need to have all kinds of different media directed, all kinds of different people. We're trying to, you know, really direct ourselves to people who, uh, you know, have some education and have, are interested in these issues. And one of the things that's really exciting to me is that we're getting these younger writers. They're well-educated. They write very well. They know the issues. They're on board with all the things you and I and the American Freedom Party are on. You know, it's, it's very heartening to see, uh, I think, a real sea change out there that people are waking up, you know, that, uh, you know, they're, they're seeing their countries go down the drain. I, I've got you know, several, several writers from England now, from the U.K., and, you know, they're, they're, it's just a disaster everywhere. All white countries are undergoing this transformational changes uh, brought about by the massive immigration. It's just horrifying to see what, what's going on, and, and we're just uh, sitting there, we're taking it, very little protest, uh, and this this recent immigration bill is just really disgusting. It's, it's really got me going. I, I I just can't believe that they're doing this. Uh, I mean, it would expand legal immigration as much as as a factor of four. We, we right now we have like 1.1 million legal immigrants every year. That is in itself, you know, it's it's transformational. That is you know, that, that level of immigration is. Uh, it's going to dispossess white America, and, and you can already see we ever they all the, always had the projections about when this is going to happen when whites become a minority. But if this bill comes into into being, it's going to be much much sooner. You're talking four million people possibly a year. Uh, they're not going to use that number, be, but if you look at the bill that they they, they uh, the, the the people that that are admitted as immigrants are going to be able to bring their relatives in from overseas. Uh, they're going to legalize all the ones who are here illegally now. Uh, and again, their relatives are all going to be able to come over. It's just going to be an incredible disaster for America. And this is all going on at a time when there's a very tight labor market, very high unemployment, and they're just bringing these people in. It's an unholy alliance of these business groups that want to have cheap labor and these ethnic activist groups that want to have more non-whites into the country. Uh, it's, it's just astounding. Uh, I, I, and to, to think that the Republican Party is going along with this. The, the Republican Party, which basically is the party of white Americans, I mean, 90% of their votes come from white people, uh, 65, 70% of white people voted Republican, uh, a majority of all ages uh, uh, of white people voted Republican in the last election. And, and they just did a survey, only 18% of Republican voters are in favor of this bill. And I'm sure if, if, if they actually knew all the details of what was in that bill, it would be even less than that. So it, 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 I don't know what these Republicans like John McCain think they're doing. I, I, I just, it boggles the mind to think that uh, they are going to, uh, you know, they may well get this through, because apparently the Senate, the, you know, certainly all the Democrats are going to go for it, and then you got a certain number of Republicans. The only hope is in the House, I think, and we'll see what happens there. Well, you, uh, you know, you, you've talked about here the 800 pound gorilla, and that is that demography is destiny. And if you change your people, if you change the people out, uh, it's over. It, it, so what the, you, exactly, uh, Dr. McDonald, what the Republican Party is talking about doing, and it is actually doing, is suicidal for the white uh, people of America, and it's happening in all you notice this, you, or you mentioned this in your mission statement at the OccidentalObserver.net, and I recommend that to people, that they read the mission statement. Uh, Kevin talks very eloquently about the fact that this is happening, this dispossession is happening in all white nations, but only in white nations, and it's not happening in any non-white nation. Other ethnic groups are, are very cognizant of and very uh, fiercely defensive of their so properly so of their self interest and somehow our white psychology has been manipulated and taken advantage of, of in some in, in ways that have caused us to be the only people in the world who who flinch we flinch when it comes to defending our legitimate proper moral self interest it's, well, it's really true and you know it's suicide for the republican party as well i mean it, you know they they're talking about 
you know, 40 million people within the next 10 years will come to America. They're all, probably almost all of them will be non-white. At least 75, probably 80%, um, even more of that percentage, uh, of that, of that number are going to vote for the Democratic Party because, not only because of immigration, because the Democrats love immigration, but because of the fact that the Democratic Party has all these handouts, they're, they're big on welfare, they, uh, you know, all, all the, you know, educational subsidies, affirmative action, all these things reside in the Democratic Party. Of course they're going to vote for Democrat. So how are Republicans going to win any more elections? They're going to have to get 99% of white people, and then, you know, they, they just can't do that. There's, there's upper limits on what what percentage they can get from white people. But it, it's just it's just absolutely amazing that this is even being considered, that, that Republicans, there are so many Republican um, politicians are going along with it. Anyway, you, you were also talking about, you know, white psychology. What is wrong with us that we are allowing this to happen? And that is a very long story. I, uh, just recently, uh, I've been, I was reading um, the book by Wilmot Robertson, The, the uh, Dispossessed Majority, which he wrote in 1972. This is an amazing book I just recently read. I know I should have read it a long time ago. I'm sure you've read it. Um, and one of the things he has in there, he has four categories of white people uh, regarding the, the, this dispossession. And one of them is uh, people who are uh, simply afraid, you know, the, the so-called pussyfooters. They, they're, they're terrified. And right now we have a, a sort of reign of terror out there. I mean, even if you have every belief that you and I have, there are millions and millions of white people who are not going to say it. They're not going to talk about it because they could get fired from their job. They're worried about their reputation. Are their, are their neighbors going to like them or not? Uh, so fear is one of the, of the big uh, uh, you know, issues here. And I think that the fear, you know, comes actually from very good reasons. You know, people have their families to support. Uh, they, they can't just, uh, you know, go out there on a limb politically and say what they want to say. They have to, they have to deal with the fact that they could lose their job uh, and, and all these terrible things could happen to them. Actually, one of the reasons I'm doing this is because I have a job where they can't fire me. They, they've tried to do that, certainly, but they can't do it. And so I feel I have a special obligation to go out there and, and, and talk about these things. But so many people are, are terrified of the consequences. So that's one big reason, and a very understandable reason. Uh, some people uh, certainly see this as an opportunity. They're sort of, uh, they, they don't care about their race enough to, to uh, you know, really stand up. And so you have people who uh, can make a profit. And I think a lot of the businessmen uh, who are in favor of this bill, and apparently last week in Congress, in the Senate, you had just businessmen after businessmen saying that they can't find, they can't find uh, the people to, to work in these jobs. Uh, that uh, Even though there's this huge unemployment, Americans won't take these jobs if they're only getting paid a, a few bucks an hour. So what, what these people really want is a labor market, where they can get paid these absolutely rock bottom wages, and the federal government, you know, comes in and, and you know pays for welfare and unemployment insurance and disability insurance. There's a huge increase in disability uh, cases, uh, which are completely funded by the federal government. Uh, these people just, you know, basically have taken themselves out of, out of the, 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 the the workforce. So, yeah. uh, you know, there's a tremendous profit to be made by knuckling under the system. So you have these businessmen doing that. You have writers. I mean, how many writers are there, you know, say these these, uh, these white people, they're not Jewish or anything else. They're just plain old white people, and they see great careers as, uh, you know, work, if, if they can write for, for these uh, these publications like Weekly Standard, these various neocon publications. And uh, if they want to write a novel, they're going to write something that they, they sh are sure that the people at the, uh, the, the big elite uh, book reviews like the, uh, you know, the... Uh, New York yeah. Review of books and that kind of stuff. That those people will like it. The publishers will like it. You can make a great career being a race trader. Uh, yeah. People who, uh, who uh, can can make you know huge salaries. They can write books. They can get on TV and the whole thing. The whole system is geared to that. Yeah. So that's you know those are sort of real reasons that people are reinforced in doing it. Other people Kevin, we'll we'll faith. come back. We'll continue with your thought right after this break. Stay tuned, folks.
The ideology powering the Democrats and Republicans is not liberalism or conservatism, but globalism. Globalists care only about the American imperial empire, not what's fair for the American people. The only antidote to the poison of globalism is nationalism, which is why you should be reading the Nationalist Times each month. The Nationalist Times is unbashedly pro-American in its outlook. We promote a common sense, intelligent, and passionate alternative to the reigning cultural Marxist party line. Published since 1985, the Nationalist Times is a newspaper which features outstanding writers who don't believe in taboos or sacred cows subscribe now to the nationalist times america's best patriotic newspaper for just 19 dollars for one year that's less than one third the regular subscription price subscribe to the nationalist times for one year for only 19 dollars by sending your subscription to the nationalist times 10161 park run drive suite 150 las vegas nevada 89145 that's the nationalist times 10161 park run drive suite 150 las vegas nevada 89145 this limited time offer is for new subscribers only How did a country founded on freedom and limited government end up with the largest, most intrusive government in world history? The process has been ongoing for a long time, and it won't change as long as the Democrat and Republican parties continue to dominate the political system in the United States. It's time to face some unpleasant facts. Americans used to say it can't happen here. Well, it can, and it has. America has become unrecognizable. We are living in a dark era where not only freedom is under direct attack, but even truth. The institutions of power and control have essentially merged into one giant organism, one that does not trust or believe in the American people. It's time to to break up the Democrat-Republican death grip on power and return America to Americans. It's time to regain our freedom by supporting the American Freedom Party. The American Freedom Party represents the American people and will return our nation to greatness. You can be part of the solution by joining the American Freedom Party for just $25. Send your $25 membership to the American Freedom Party, 9811 West Charleston Boulevard, Suite 2-441, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. Again, that's the American Freedom Party, 9811 West Charleston Boulevard, Suite 2-441, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. What's the best source of information on the Internet? ANUnews.net. ANUnews.net is regularly updated with the best cross-section of news and views. You need to fully understand what's going on in the world and why. ANUnews.net finds the most informative and provocative articles to be found on the Internet for you to read. ANUnews.net is your online daily newspaper, an important weapon in the battle to arm Americans with the information they need to defeat the one-worlders and cultural Marxists. Make ANUnews.net a regular part of your Internet experience. You'll be glad you did by visiting ANUnews.net. A to Z Publications is your one-stop source for books written by Dr. Adrian H. Krieg. Dr. Krieg is a Renaissance man whose knowledge of the issues of the day and the needed solutions is unsurpassed. Dr. Krieg has written 13 books, titled such as Rendezvous with the New World Order, Obama's Nightmare Plan, Oz and the New Millennium, and others are available online from A to Z Publications. Go to A to Z Publications in order today. That's the letter A, the number 2, the letter Z, publications.com. Or write A to Z Publications, Post Office Box 110163, Bradenton, Florida, 34211. Welcome back to the show, folks. This is your host, James Kelso, with the American Freedom Party Report. Our guest is Dr. Kevin McDonald, professor of psychology at Cal State University, Long Beach. He is uh, also a member of the American Freedom Party Board of Directors. You've heard other Board of Directors members in our initial shows on this new broadcast. We uh, started out with our executive director, Don Wassel, uh, followed by... Uh, Dr. Adrian Krieg, who uh, was our guest last week. And our second show featured our 2012 presidential candidate, Merlin Miller, West Point class of 74. Next week, we bring to this microphone Dr. Tom Sunick, another member of the board of directors of the American Freedom Party. I'd like to give you that website address so you can con- you can continue your study and so that you can join us. Uh, a basic principle is that you can't fight something with nothing. So, and we have created the American Freedom Party as something that those pussyfooters that Dr. McDonald mentioned in the terminology of the, the great Wilmot Robertson in his book, The Dispossessed Majority, uh, the pussyfooters can lose some of that fear, that psychology of fear, if they know that there is something out there, that there are people standing and representing their true views. We in the American Freedom Party, we do represent the views of the bulk of white folks. Our views on immigration, which is what we're talking about tonight, are exactly in line with the average American. We're not the radicals. The radicals are, are um, people like Eric Cantor, Republican Majority Leader, 
who is completely out of line with our people, uh, and John McCain and others like that. These are the kooks. So, um, Dr. McDonald, I know you've waited for a long time uh, for a political a political action that we can push back, and we're doing that. By the way, let me give you give you the address. It's the American Freedom Party. Dot us. That's a very important name to remember. The American Freedom Party. us. We invite you to join us. We've got a reduced membership rate of twenty five dollars for your first year of membership. Uh, please take advantage of that. We look forward to uh, uh, welcoming you, welcoming you into the American Freedom Party. Uh, I'm the membership coordinator, so I'll have a chance to uh, contact you directly when you join our party. Uh, would you comment, uh, please, Dr. McDonald, on the importance of a political push? Well, absolutely. I mean, it's pathetic that we we are so far behind, say, what's going on in Europe in, in national circles. You have uh, in, in Greece, you have the Golden Dawn Party. They've got 18 seats in the, in the Parliament there. Um, in, in Hungary, the, the, the Javik Party's uh, well advanced. You, the, even in Germany, you have the uh, the uh, National Democratic Party, I believe, has got seven seats in the in the uh, provincial state legislatures and so on. We we are we we have to get going here. We have to have a pushback. It's obvious that the Republican Party has completely betrayed its base. And uh, you know, it, it, it is a case that in the last election, a lot of a lot of white people stayed home because they weren't going to vote for for Romney. They, they didn't feel that Romney really represented them well. Uh, that that's probably were right ultimately. Uh, and I think we're going to see uh, it's going to be even worse in, in, in the near future. We, if this immigration law goes through, if people see this, uh, there's going to be a huge disaffection. Uh, and in, in the uh, primary season uh, in 2000 for, two, for the 2016 election, you're going to see uh, anger. We already see huge anger, in, in, you know, in, in the base. But the people uh, don't know where to go, and they don't have any voices. Uh, they, they, I guess some some voice. I guess Rush Limbaugh is getting a little better on immigration. Um, I heard that the uh, Drudge Report has some good stuff recently. Maybe some of these uh, mainstream conservative uh, sites are getting onto this, but it has not generally been the case. Uh, they have avoided that issue. You can you know, listen to O'Reilly and all these other people, and they may talk about illegal immigration. They will never talk about legal immigration. You know, because they're afraid of being called a racist. They want to keep their show on the air and all that kind of stuff. But it's just pathetic. But we, we have to blow back. We have to get a presence. We need a lot of money. We need uh, organizing. Uh, we need a whole lot of stuff. But, you know, it, it, it could happen. And, and uh, we have a message that will resonate with, with, with white people. It's just getting it out there. Well, I noticed uh, that on your editorial advisory board, on your publications, the Occidental Quarterly and the Occidental Observer, uh, Dr. Virginia Abernethy, professor of anthropology at Vanderbilt in Nashville, Tennessee, is uh, another of our board of directors members. Uh, next week, our guest here on this microphone will be Dr. Tom Sunick. And there are other names. Uh, another professorial figure on our board is uh, Bob Whitaker. Uh, Don Wassell is our executive director. We have a, a a number of noted attorneys, Don Wassell, Alex Carmichael, and our chairman, William Daniel Johnson, uh, who will also be coming to this microphone soon. And the, uh, there's a radio host you, a lot of you know, uh, James Edwards, on our board of directors, a, uh, a man in West Virginia, Harry Bertram, who has been a uh, candidate. He has uh, done what we want to do, which is he runs for office every two years. And he has been pushing back in West Virginia, and he is uh, doing what uh, is needed. Uh, you might comment on this, uh, Kevin, how uh, our people will take our ideas more seriously. We'll come back to this right after this break. Listening to the Republic Broadcasting Network because you can handle the truth. Extend your 
life with its dead Are you or someone you know suffering from high blood pressure, cholesterol, or chest pains? Are you looking for a more natural way to overcome these health challenges? Extendivite is made from herbs known to help with these symptoms. Made from garlic, cayenne, hawthorn, and four other herbs, Extendivite goes to work detoxifying heavy metals and killing fungus and virus to enhance your overall health. For only $69.95 plus shipping and handling for a two-month supply of either capsules or liquid, you too can begin on your path to better health. For more information, call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822. Or visit our website at heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extend Ovite. American gardeners and fellow patriots make the right choice with your money, time, and your family food supply. Choose 100% pure heirloom seeds in the Survival Seed Vault from MyPatriotSupply.com. Why spend more? The Survival Seed Vault from MyPatriotSupply.com is only $37.95 and includes 20 varieties of pure, hardy, easy-to-grow heirloom seeds. Yes, only $37.95. That's 70% less than our competitors. You could buy three Survival Seed Vaults for less than one of theirs. The Survival Seed Vault from MyPatriotSupply.com includes detailed planting and seed saving instructions and ships same day. Plus, all orders over $49 ship free. MyPatriotSupply.com is American owned by patriots like you, passionate about freedom and preparedness. Call now, 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Or discover more emergency preparedness items when you order at MyPatriotSupply.com. Choose the original. Choose the survival seed vault at MyPatriotSupply.com. An effective, 100% organic nutritional supplement is now available to be shipped out to you Rush Delivery. Heart and Body Extract is a 100% natural organic and wild-crafted formula made out of garlic, hawthorn berries, hawthorn leaves, coleus, motherwort, bilberry, butcher's broom kelp, mistletoe, ginger, and cayenne pepper. It is an excellent formula designed to balance and support the heart and circulatory system. It is extremely effective and starts to work within days. Order your two-month supply by visiting heartandbody.com or by calling 866-295-5305. 866-295-5305. Take the high road to a long and happy life. Heart and Body. Dot com. Welcome back to the show, folks. This is James Kelso and the American Freedom Party Report. Uh, my guest tonight is Dr. Kevin McDonald. A professor of psychology at Cal State University, Long Beach. And we were talking about the uh, uh, causing our uh, kinsmen to summon up the courage to resist their own dispossession. And Kevin, could you talk about uh, the way in which presenting our message uh, as a message that can win and as a message that is normal, uh, that is a mainstream message, how we how that's important in our presentation so that we are not marginalized which of course is the goal of uh, the people trying to do us in want to make our uh, portray us as kooks how can we fight that well it's very difficult uh, the, the fact is that they control the mainstream media i think that th- that this whole thing could turn around in a year in a very short period of time if we had access to the same kind of access to the mainstream media that these other that people who are liberals or neoconservatives or uh, whatever, <clears throat> the kind of access that they have. Um, it, it, uh, if, if we had someone who, you know, and the problem is, of course, that this is actively policed. I mean, it's not as if this is an accident. You know, uh, I remember there was a while ago that at CPAC, you know, the conservative, uh, uh, they, they have their meetings every year, I think. <clears throat> and they had Peter Brimlow there and James Edwards. You mentioned James Edwards. He's on the board of the American Freedom Party. Peter, Peter Brimlow runs V-Dare. 
<clears throat> they went to CPAC and they were actually interviewed by MSNBC and one of the big cable networks. And they were talking about immigration. Well, as soon as that happened, there was just a furor. All these, these police watchdog uh, organizations are furious that they were actually interviewed because they do not want any message like that in the mainstream media. <clears throat> so it's very actively police. So I, it's, it's very hard to, to break through. I mean, if, if, if we had, if say we had a thousand volunteers from American Third Position, we had them going from door to door, you're still going to get very little response. People are afraid. They don't know you. They uh, have heard that you're a racist because that you know these groups are going to call you a racist. They're going to pull out all these these names and everything. So w what we we suffer from is this lack of legitimacy. We 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 don't have access to the elite mainstream kinds of media, and it's no accident that we don't. As you're saying, these are our enemies. They want us to fail. They want white. Uh, they want America to be a non-white country. Uh -huh. And, and uh -huh. they want it to happen as soon as possible. Yes, and you just... Uh, and they really don't care about any other consequences. So you just put uh, your, this is very actively being done to us. You just put your finger on uh, a key reason that we want to push back politically. And that is this, folks. That legitimacy that Kevin McDonald is talking about, a lot of it can be gained when, as New Jersey voters experienced in the 2012 election, they pick up their ballot, and there it says, for president... Uh, we, our former name was American Third Position. Kevin mentioned it. Uh, our, our name now is American Freedom Party. They saw the American Freedom Party and Merlin Miller as our candidate. Right away, right there, folks, when you are on the ballot uh, politically, for the average white person, you gain a tremendous amount of legitimacy. And that's one of the things we're taking advantage of by creating a political party and pushing back in that way. We've been pushing back with intellectual pursuits and great magazines and um, uh, websites and radio like this, uh, but we've been uh, AWOL when it comes to politics. Since the demise of the Populist Party way back in 19, around 1992, we haven't had a political party. Now we do. We want you to join it. Uh, we want you to, uh, you know, Lend your shoulder, put your shoulder to the wheel of activism in politics with the American Freedom Party. So, but um, in you know, when we can go on, one of the things we can do in a, with a political party, we can get radio ads that must be aired uh, because of FEC rules. So we can get radio ads that give that luster of legitimacy to our cause. And so this is a way, uh, Kevin, I think you'll agree, a way of breaking through that media blockade you're talking about. Could you comment on that? Absolutely. It's very important to get our message out, uh, to get uh, as many ads out and, and all that. Because it, it, you're right, I mean, if, especially if we were, say, on television and, 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 you know, or if we were advertised on Rush Limbaugh or these big radio shows, it does give you legitimacy after that. People have heard your name before. And, and, they, and uh, that, that would definitely help to get the word out, to, yeah, to and folks, make it more respectable. Because I think right now, you know, so many people they hear the name and they don't know anything. They, they, um, you know, they're going to be intimidated by charges of racism and so on. But yeah, I mean, just being there is is important. You've got to be part of the furniture, and it, it is great to have radio ads where they talk about white interests. You know, talk about immigration from a white point of view, and get them used to talking that, to hearing that, and not yeah, to, no. just sort of closing their minds off and closing their ears. To get used to the idea that white people have interests, that it's okay to identify as a white person, that no, we should not want immigration for a whole lot of reasons, but one of them is because we're white and we're, we're going to become a political minority in the country that we built. I mean, th those are the messages that we have to get out there to, to, so people get used to hearing them. They uh, become part of the furniture of their life and, and they, it becomes part of the, of the political debate then. Yeah, and <clears throat> folks... This is an exciting thing that those of us active in the American Freedom Party, we know, and we want to share it with you. This breakthrough, breaking through the blockade, the media blockade of a controlled media, it's especially possible when you uh, have a political party because uh, radio stations and TV stations cannot refuse our ads. They cannot edit them. They must air them as we write them. This is FEC law rules. And they have to offer them at their lowest commercial rate, which is, in every case, extremely low. So here's what I want to excite you with. When you get active with AFP, your uh, dollar...
will go a long, long ways. You'll be able, this may seem impossible or hard to believe, but it's true. On a medium-sized radio station, for $10, we can get a 30-second spot saying exactly what we want to say. This can only be done if you've got a political party. These ads, this commentary of speaking for white interests, will never, never get through, at least in the current environment, uh, even at, if we paid 10 times as much money, they wouldn't run those ads. But the FEC requires that we, as a political party, be able to play on a level playing field with the, the big parties. So this is an am amazing strategic opportunity. You want to take advantage of it. I, I certainly agree with that. And it reminds me, I was mentioning Wilmer Roberts' book. In there, he mentioned, this is in 1972, that there uh, he was that when he published his book, he could not buy advertising in the mainstream media. So this has been going on for thirty years, forty years. You know, and and uh, it, there's certainly no no um, no change. You still can't uh, probably couldn't buy advertising for a book like that. You can't you couldn't buy advertising for books like mine. So that's the way th this works. So we have to break through this media blockade this this very very intensive policing of the media it's that's the number one reason why we we are why things are the way they are i think white people if they heard our message if they heard it presented uh in a in a good way as we are doing and if we they heard it and and, and in the channels uh you know the big uh you know big media and uh even even political advertising uh and and it's going to make a difference. They're going to resonate to it because uh, it's it's obvious in their interest, and it, it's been, so it's a total no no brainer. What's so astounding is that these these major the Republican politicians like McCain are just there's no way in the world these these immigrants that they're inviting in are going to vote for them. It's suicidal for the Republican Party. It's suicidal for white America. Uh, but if we don't do something soon, and, and we should do other things, we should write our congressman, we should phone, make uh, phone calls, we should do everything we can to oppose this this law. And the uh, and you know another thing to uh, consider, folks, is that um, if you may be cynical about the possibilities of politics, remember that uh, you want to exhaust all of the uh, everything you can do with the uh, ballot box and the soap box before you reach for the cartridge box. And so wh whatever, wh however uh, our destiny as a people resolves itself, and however we resolve it, we're going to, politics and, and, and a strong political push back is going to help uh, however we successfully resist. We've got a caller. Um, caller, can you hear me? Albert, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, uh, can you hear me? Sure, sure. What's your question, sir? Uh, yeah, I'm just curious. How will uh, whites become minority when out of 8 million Americans, 225 million are white? What is, what's well, the question? Um, there are 225 million whites out of 8 million Americans. Um, how are we going to become minority when there's so much whites? Well, it's just a matter of time. I mean, a lot of the people are... The projection is 2042, but if they if they get this immigration law in there, I, but there's so I, much I would think it would over so much yeah, white. Wait before that, so much probably or not whites combined. Yeah, yeah, go go ahead. We've got your question, so uh, 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 please don't talk over uh, Kevin. Uh, uh, caller, I'm I'm 64. I remember when America was 90 percent white. I remember it. I that I lived in that world in the 1950s. It was 90 percent white. Today, That's possibly we might be. Europe. But possibly we. Europe. But hang, hang on, hang on. I've got your question. Now I'm answering it, uh, and and Kevin will give you the, an answer as well. Sixty five percent might be the current uh, white population. It's going down. It's plummeting like a rock, and our own Census Bureau says we will be a minority. This is not controversial, caller. The, our own Census Bureau, which is hardly a source of, uh, of pro white facts, is saying we will be a a minority uh, a, a very, very shortly within our lifetimes. And then we've lost even political control. Uh, Kevin, could you address that? Well, that's exactly my point, that, that uh, the, all, all the projections, from the, including the, the, the U.S. Census Bureau, project whites to be a minority. I've, I've heard 2042. 
but uh, again, if this thing is is is, is enacted, it's going to be well before that because you're talking about 40 million non-whites coming into the country, becoming citizens in the next 10 years, and who knows then after that? They keep bringing they they, they have a relatively high fertility rate and so on. So uh, yeah, I mean, th this is just this is obviously a reality, and and we have to be thinking about that. Uh, well in advance, because once this happens, we are going to lose political control. Even now, in, in the last election, uh, probably about 65 percent of whites, uh, if you exclude people who weren't really did, don't really have European ancestry, voted for Romney. Well, uh, that was not enough to make him president, and uh, because he had 80 percent of non-whites voting for the Democratic Party. So whites have already lost political control unless they vote almost, you know, as a as a complete block, uh, like the, some of these other ethnic groups do, and uh, so, it, and it, I think that would have dire consequences. When whites become a minority, they're not going to have any control. There are a lot of these minorities have grudges on their shoulder, historical grudges about uh, what's happened in the past or how they think of what happened in the past, and and so whites are going to be victimized. It's going to be very, very bad. And uh, I, I think um, it's something we have to really, really pay attention to. And you know, and what's exciting about the American Freedom Party? What what excites me so much about it, and and all of us in the American Freedom Party, is that we're building a cultural institution as well as a political party. Uh, we're and we're building an institution uh, that is explicitly advocating the interests of our people, and doing that just. That's all we're doing. That's exactly what we're doing. And it ends the frustration that all of us have felt uh, in the Republican Party where efforts have been made uh, to, you know, take over the Republican Party, take it back from within the Ron Paul revolution, which many of us were uh, uh, up to our eyeballs in. You know, the hope was that Ron Paul, with these millions of people, millions of white people motivated and, and on the march, that Ron Paul would break through and say, and we've got to seek our interests as a people. And so on, but Ron would never go there, uh, and his son Rand is also showing that he is not willing to go there. Uh, somebody has to go there. Somebody has to pick up that flag that's been dropped and advance it uh, across the field, and that's what the American Freedom Party is about. And all these, uh, pe the millions of people in the Ron Paul Revolution, uh, m so many of whom want wanted Ron to go this. To, to go to the real point of what we're doing, which is to preserve our people, to preserve uh, uh, our freedoms for ourselves and our posterity, not somebody else's posterity, our posterity. This is all for our children and our grandchildren and uh, hundreds of generations to follow them. Uh, that's the whole point. All this economic frou-frou and discussion about uh, this or that tax rate or something, that's all just... Uh, you know, that's just all ornamentation on the cake. The real heart of the matter is the survival of a people. All right. I think the vast majority of countries of the world see themselves that way. If you go to Korea, I'm sure the Korean government partly, you know, at least implicitly, wants to preserve the Korean people. You, uh, you know, Africa, the Middle East, China, they're, they're all like that. The only countries that aren't, as you were saying before, as I've said many times, the only countries that aren't are, are white uh, countries with European ancestry. And, I, you know, talking about the psychology of this, I do think that we are much more individualistic than other peoples. We're less ethnocentric. Uh, we, we, don't, we don't have a, a, a strong sense of kinship and biological connectedness. And I think uh, we, we tend to be more egalitarian than other peoples, uh, more uh, prone to being concerned about our reputation because... I think our groups, and way back when, during evolutionary history, thousands of years ago, we tended to have formed groups that were not based on so much on kinship and biological relatedness, but on reputation and trust. And so, white people uh, are very concerned about, you know, presenting a, a public self that is trustworthy. But that what that means now is that, that because of the, the whole media environment has been controlled by the left. Uh, white people try to be respectable by saying how unracist they are, and they're very prone to expressions of guilt. A lot of uh, m my recent research right now, I'm, I've been reading about the anti-slavery movement. White people are the only people in history that abolished slavery, and they and the people who were really active in doing it 
where it had this moral sense, a strong moral sense that it was bad. And that is something that is unique. And I'm trying to understand this psychologically. But you see these people, they, they just have a, a very strong moral sense. The anti-slavery movement was the first movement in human history where these people did all this activism on behalf of people from a different race. You know, these, these Quakers and these other activists, the, the, the uh, abolitionists and from, from uh, New England and so on, they were doing it uh, not for their own aggrandizement. They were doing it because they felt it was just horrible to be enslaving other people. So they were actually act, uh, active on behalf of black Americans and blacks in the West Indies for the British Empire. And uh, it was just an amazing story. But uh, the, well, that's the motivation well, that these people had. None of them gained anything economically well, from it uh, Kevin, at all. Kevin, we'll, we'll, we'll continue with this as we close the show in our next segment. Stay tuned, folks. What will you do without freedom? That's the question the American Freedom Party is asking as a high-tech surveillance state continues to be constructed in the one timeline of liberty. Through methodical gradualism over many years, the United States has been hollowed out economically and morally. The Republican Party is little more than a partner in crime to the open globalism and cultural Marxism of the Democrats. Both parties support the offshoring of American industry and jobs, open borders, endless wars of aggression all over the world, and slavish obedience to Israel and to the banksters and gangsters of Wall Street. The American Freedom Party is guided by the sole principle of supporting what's good for America and Americans. The American Freedom Party rejects the archaic liberal conservative paradigm in favor of an outspoken advocacy of freedom and liberty that rings true to America's traditional values and way of life. The hour is late, but America can yet survive and begin to thrive again. If enough Americans act to regain their freedom, the alternative is too bleak to contemplate. Learn more about the American Freedom Party and join us by going to the AmericanFreedomParty.us. That's the AmericanFreedomParty.us. How did a country founded on freedom and limited government end up with the largest, most intrusive government in world history? The process has been ongoing for a long time, and it won't change as long as the Democrat and Republican parties continue to dominate the political system in the United States. It's time to face some unpleasant facts. Americans used to say it can't happen here. Well, it can, and it has. America has become unrecognizable. We are living in a dark era where not only freedom is under direct attack, but even truth. The institutions of power and control have essentially merged into one giant organism, one that does not trust or believe in the American people. It's time to break up the Democrat-Republican death grip on power and return America to Americans. It's time to regain our freedom by supporting the American Freedom Party. The American Freedom Party represents the American people and will return our nation to greatness. You can be part of the solution by joining the American Freedom Party for just $25. Send your $25 membership to the American Freedom Party, 9811 West Charleston Boulevard, Suite 2-441, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. Again, that's the American Freedom Party, 9811 West Charleston Boulevard, Suite 2-441, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. The ideology powering the Democrats and Republicans is not liberalism or conservatism, but globalism. Globalists care only about the American imperial empire, not what's fair for the American people. The only antidote to the poison of globalism is nationalism, which is why you should be reading the Nationalist Times each month. The Nationalist Times is unbashedly pro-American in its outlook. We promote a common sense, intelligent, and passionate alternative to the reigning cultural Marxist party line. Published since 1985, the Nationalist Times is a newspaper which features outstanding writers who don't believe in taboos or sacred cows subscribe now to the nationalist times america's best patriotic newspaper for just 19 dollars for one year that's less than one-third the regular subscription price subscribe to the nationalist times for one year for only 19 dollars by sending your subscription to the nationalist times 10161 park run drive suite 150 las vegas nevada 89145 that's the nationalist times 10161 park run drive suite 150 las vegas nevada 89145 this limited time offer is for new subscribers only Welcome back, folks. Uh, this is James Kelso on the American Freedom Party Report. And there is something happening here, and, and, and it is now exactly clear. Uh, and that is that we are being dispossessed. We've had a very exciting show with Dr. Kevin McDonald. We uh, have only five minutes left. We'll take one very short uh, call. Um, we'll have to be short caller. And then I want to uh, uh, mention to you folks that this is the fourth show that we've had in our American Freedom Party series here on RBN. We're very pleased to, to be hosted by RBN. Our first show featured our executive director, Don Wassell. You want to listen to that in the RBN archives. Our second show 
was our 2012 presidential candidate, the extraordinary Merlin Miller. Don't miss that show. And last week, the equally extraordinary uh, Dr. Adrian Krieg. Uh, tonight, Dr. Kevin McDonald. And you'll notice, folks, that next week, Dr. Tom Sunick, we are doing something that the other side did. They uh, decapitated our culture from the top. They did a march through the institutions uh, that included capturing academia and uh, high finance and uh, positions in culture and the arts. And we're answering that in the American Freedom Party uh, with people like Dr. Kevin McDonald, extraordinary people, Merlin Miller, Don Wassell, extraordinary people uh, that can uh, lead a push back against these people who captured our uh, key institutions. Uh, let me go to a caller here. It's going to have to be a very brief caller. Griff, can you hear me? Okay, we've got uh, Rob. Rob, come in. Hi, Rob. Hi, who is this? This is uh, this is Jamie, Rob. Yeah. yeah uh, you don't have much time left. No. Uh, give, uh, what have you? What uh, what question have you got for Doctor McDonald? Well, I wanted to comment about his. Uh, he, he made some remarks about kinship and uh, that sort of thing. And I have to say that when I was at the Polish uh, uh, Cape Memorial, a lot of the uh, Polish there speak Polish, and they had a, 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 a connection direct to the, to the homeland. And I see many European Americans here now that are so removed, uh, generally, generationally removed from their European roots. Uh, they don't even have a, a concept of their uh, their language. and So uh, Europeans don't have, like, become disconnected from uh, who they are, in a sense. And another thing I'd like to ask is how can we overcome this apathy from people who don't want to really take an active role in their uh, in reclaiming uh, their uh, rightful place? I think that those are very good points. I think that uh, it seems that this 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 lack of ethnocentrism, this this really strong individualism, is more characteristic of Northern and Western Europe. Um, we need more ethnocentric. We need to, to feel to, a, a connection to our people, uh, and it's very hard to create that now uh, because it's been pathologized. I mean, Jamie was saying, you know, our culture has been decapitated. That's a very good expression, a very good way to say it. They took the brains out. They, they got into the cockpit where the where the, the people who are running the society at the, at the most elite intellectual level, and once they got that. Everything else sort of followed. We have to fight back on that. And we are fighting really back. We're really trying to get a sense of identity and to, to stress how important We are it fighting is back. Kevin, Kevin uh, thank you for leading in that fight. This is James Kelso saying so long, folks. Tune in next week when Tom Sunick will be our guest on the American Freedom Party Report. <laughs>